Hello everybody and welcome to this week's edition of MQTT Monday. Today's topic is the request response pattern of MQTT 5. Request response in MQTT is not the same as it is in HTTP. When we talk about request response in MQTT, it is still asynchronous and is what we call an end-to-end -end acknowledgement. When you have very important commands or jobs where the sender needs to be notified about the receiver of the message receiving that message, it is important to implement a so-called so business acknowledgement where the receiver of the message sends back a second MQTT message to the sender of the message. This pattern was also commonly used with MQTT 3, but now with MQTT 5, a number of attributes and features have been introduced that allow the use of this feature in an interoperable way across multiple teams. First, we have the response topic that can be set in every published message together with the correlation data. The response topic defines the topic on which the receiver of the message has to send back the result of the message, whereas the correlation data is an identifier so that the sender of the message knows which of his sent out publishes he got the response for. This is necessary because, of course, like everything in MQTT, we have an end to M relationship here and there can be multiple subscribers for a single topic. And so the sender of the message uses the correlation da data to know which publish was referenced. A third feature is the so-called response information. This is an optional field that a client can set on its connect. When the client sets response information equals true, then the broker is allowed to send them an arbitrary string defining the part of the topic tree where response topics are expected. This is very important to really allow implementation of transparent clients and for example, transparent PLCs that react to the response information based on what broker they use. Now let's talk about a typical use case. One of the very typical use cases for a request response uh, pattern is a smart home and a smart door. When you go to your smart home with your smartphone and you want to open your door, you want to absolutely make sure that the command is received and processed by your door. So whether or not the door was successfully opened or not, in any case, you want to have a response on your phone so that not for some unexplainable reason or lag in the internet, you leave the home and 20 minutes later, the door will be opened. Now let's talk about best practices and typical gotchas when implementing the request response pattern. You should absolutely use the response information field in the connect when you can. This way you can define a certain part of your topic tree specifically for the response topics. Speaking about response topics, a very good practice is to implement unique identifiers within each of the response topic, so the response can even be mapped to specific clients. A typical gotcha is that when you talk about topic permissions in MQTT, you have to make sure that a receiving client of a message that is implemented in a request response pattern also needs to be able to publish on set response topic. Similarly, the sending client, who is a publisher, needs to also be able to subscribe to the response topic so he can receive the response from the receiver of the message. And lastly, make sure that every sender subscribes to the response topic first before they send the message. Join us next week when we talk about topic analysis and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.